And now for a grim note in today's news. Promptly at 8 o'clock tonight, killer Joe Rosinski will walk his last mile on Earth and will pay his debt to society in the electric chair at the state penitentiary. Last-minute efforts on the part of Rosinski's attorney to obtain executive clemency have failed. Rosinski, you will recall, was convicted for the brutal murders of three women. His capture brought to an end a wave of terror which aroused the entire metropolis. In addition to the three killings of which he was convicted, Rosinski was declared by police to have been responsible for many other murderous attacks on women. Tonight, the law of the state, which demands an eye for an eye, will end the career of Killer Rosinski. In the death chamber of the state's prison, executioner Ernest Matthews will throw the switch, which will jolt the slayer into eternity. Why are you all staring at me? Oh, you don't need to tell me. I know what you're thinking. Sure, I know. I'm going to kill a man tonight. For $250, I'm going to throw a switch and jolt a man into eternity. Just like that guy says. And you're... You're thinking, all three of you are thinking, that I'm just as much a murderer as the man I'm going to kill. Oh, take it easy, Ernie. Public sentiment's all on your side. But the whole state is waiting for Rosinski's execution. Isn't it, Ward? Sure, get a grip on yourself. After all, it isn't you who does the killing. Sure, I know. It isn't me. It's the state. That's what you were going to say, wasn't it, Ward? Well, that's the truth, Ernie. You're doing a job for the state, just like I am, just like all of us are. Here, have a cigarette. It'll make you feel better. Thanks, Doc. I guess you're right. We've all got jobs. Eve and I are ahead. He gives them a dose of religion, calms them down. I send them on their way. Then you listen with your stethoscope and pronounce them officially gone. <laughs> and the warden signs the certificate. <laughs> Just one big happy family, aren't we? You've got to stop this, honey. You must get hold of yourself or quit. Oh, you think so, do you? You think I ought to quit my job, huh? Smart, aren't you? Got the whole thing figured out. <laughs> Listen, Ira, you stick to your work and forget about me. Excuse me, gentlemen. I've got to tune up my machinery. There can't be any slips from the state. I'm worried about Ernie. I wouldn't worry about him too much. He always puts on an act like this. Somehow it didn't seem like an act today. I hope nothing goes wrong. Don't you worry, Ward. When the time comes, Ernie will step right up there and throw that switch just like it's all in the day's work. Come in. Well, Warden, uh, the reporters are on their way up. All right. Oh, and Johnny, you know the rules. Have Sullivan put you in your cell before the execution. Yes, I understand. Hello, Warden. Hello, Doc. Hi, right, Captain. Well, what do you think of? What did the killer order for his last meal? What message did he send to his poor old mother, if any? Huh? Did nothing to say, didn't order anything special, didn't seem to care. His mother died when he was a child. Oh, isn't that a shame? Well, he can give her the message in person, huh, Chaplin? When he crosses over. I think I'll run along over to the hospital and pick up my things. It's about that time. Yes, it's about time. You know, Warden, this is 140 I've been looking forward to. A guy going around slugging women ought to get his. Now, me, I use a different technique. You know, I don't get a thrill out of these killers anymore. Don't you get sick on me again. Come on.
you've got to stop thinking about it that way. You've got to. Well, this man that's going to die tonight, he's killed three women, possibly more. He deserves what he's getting. Steady, dear. That's just Andy testing the dynamo. I know where they are, but just scared me. You don't belong in a prison. You belong with flowers and sunshine, not steel and stone and concrete. I'll tell you what I'll do. When I get back from my vacation, we'll get out of here, both of us. I'd even start practicing in a small town if you'd go with me. What do you say? I can't say anything yet. I love you, Joe. You know that. I believe you, Bob. But I won't marry you till I'm sure. It wouldn't be fair if things didn't work out. No, I'm I'm either going to be a nurse or a wife. It's all or nothing. Please don't think I'm a romantic little fool talking like this. I don't. I think you're a darling. Johnny's going to drive me to the airport. After it's over. Do you want to go with me? Yes, of course. Well. Johnny, maybe you'll have flowers soon. Gee, I'd like to have a lot of them. I'd like to fill the whole place with them. What you thinking about, Johnny? Same thing everybody around here is thinking about on a night like this. I bet you no guard could put me in a chair. I'm strong. Did you ever see it, Johnny? Huh? Did you? Did you? Sure, he's seen everything in this stir. He's the warden's pet. You shut up. Nobody was asking you. I was asking Johnny. I'm Big Billy. Johnny's my pal. Yeah? But does keep him calling your pal a fink. Come a little closer to the bars and say that. Come on. Just close enough so I get my hands on your neck. I'm strong. I'm Big Billy. I'll make you pop. Call him my pal, I think. Go on, you big rum gum. Uh, let him alone, Billy. Oh! <laughs> he calls you a fink. You ain't no fink, are you, John? If he ain't a fink, what is he? Drive Warden's car and serve him the Warden's table. Go on, get him to tell you what he is. Well, it's smart enough to know, Fart, that being tough around a place like this gets you nothing. Of course, my case is a little different than yours. I'm coming up for a parole in a couple of weeks. And in about three months, I'll be getting out of here. And I won't be coming back. Let's see now. The judge threw about 50 years at you, didn't he? That gets you out of here in 1990. Maybe I'll be seeing you around. You ain't only a fig, but you're a... Why don't you guys pipe down? How can a fellow improve his mind with you yammering your heads off? Ah! Proving his mind with a guy in the death house waiting to be knocked over. What do you want me to do? Get out the crying towel for a woman killer? Woman killer. Yeah. Yeah. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And one of these days, I'm going to write an article on capital punishment for one of the national magazines. With my experience, oh, I ought to... Cut it out, William. The execution's over. Has been for an hour. Can't you think of something else to talk about? Sorry, honey. I didn't mean to talk. Shut up. Oh, forget it. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Well, now that the evening's work is over, I'm off on my vacation. I envy you, Bob. You should. Just think of it. A whole month of Bermuda. Golf, fishing... Boys, I'm going to have myself a time. You think this doctor is filling in for you while you're gone is all right? Oh, perfect. With Joan here to show him the ropes, he can't make a mistake. You're lucky. I wish I could find a substitute. I'd go away for a year. Well, see you tomorrow, Gordon. Right, have a good time. I will. Ira, keep feeding them religion. They won't need so many pills. <laughs> I'll do that, Bob. Enjoy yourself. Thanks. Ernie, I, I don't know what to tell you. You don't have another assignment for a couple of months. Oh, yes, I have. I've got an assignment for tonight. Do a little drinking at the town tavern. That is, if you have no objections to dropping me off. How about it, John? Do you mind if I tag along? I've got a lot of nasty thoughts I want to leave in an empty bottle. Of course not, Ernie. I know exactly how you feel. I wonder. I wonder if anyone really knows how I feel. Well, let's be going. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 I have a hunch we're going to lose the doctrine in this one of these days, Ira. I'm afraid you're right, Jim. Say, what is this? You sound like old man Gloom. Perhaps I do. But there's a reason for it. Would it surprise you to know that I'm in love with Joan myself? Yeah. In my business, nothing surprises me. You ever told Joan about it? No. And probably never will, as long as she shows a preference for Bob. And then there's Ernie to be considered. Ernie? You don't mean to tell me that he's in love with her, too? Yes. He told me months ago the only reason he remains here is so he can be near Joan. Say, okay. am I running a prison or a lonely hearts club? Nice of you two to drop me by the village bistro. Oh, that's all right, Ernie. Glad to do it. You think it's such a good idea? What do you mean, such a good idea? Oh, drowning your sorrows. I'm positive, my dear. I assure you the relief will only be temporary. Tomorrow I'll probably have an acute case of the jitters, during which I'll see my entire clientele parading before me in an accusing phantasmagoria. And then... And toward evening, I'll, I'll sober up. Start looking forward to my next rendezvous with the, <laughs> the Grim Reaper. <laughs> Stop it, Ernie. You're talking like a crazy man. Well, maybe I am crazy. You know, I, I once talked with a psychiatrist at a murder trial. And he told me that the line of demarcation between sanity and insanity is almost an intangible thread. Oh, Ernie, honestly. Well, thanks for the lift. Have a swell vacation, Doc. See you tomorrow, John. If I can still see. Goodbye. I wish you were going with me, Joan. This is Mrs. Lee. Well, I'll take a rain check on that proposition, mister. 
Well, maybe we can make the same trip sometime in the future. Okay. But don't make it too long. Say, Doctor. Yes, Johnny. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions about a pal of mine? No, go right ahead. Well, this guy sleeps in the same cell as me. They call him Big Billy. Oh, yes, I know the man. Now, what about him? Well, he's been acting and talking kind of funny lately. I don't know just how to explain it to you, but... Well, it reminds me of a guy in a book I read before I came up there. The guy in the book had a pal, too. Only they weren't in prison. They, they were a couple of farmhands out west someplace. And all the time, this big goof, the guy like Billy, was getting into jams, and well, he kept his pal busy getting him out of him. And one day, the big goof kills a dame, although he didn't mean to. And his pal couldn't get him out of that kind of a jam, so there's nothing left for him to do but shoot the big guy, because he didn't want to see him hung. Know the book I'm talking about, Doc? Yes, I have read it. But what's that got to do with Big Billy? Maybe nothing at all. Only I got a feeling that Big Billy's going to tear loose someday and cause a lot of trouble. He's a great big farmer boy, and being cramped up in stir is getting him. He belongs out on the prison farm. He'd work his head off out there. He loves the animals. They wouldn't torment him. I'll tell you what I'll do. When I get back from Bermuda, you remind me. And I'll see what I can do with the warden about getting him transferred. Thanks, Doc. You're a great guy. I'll try to keep him out of trouble till you get back. I'm going to miss you, Joan. Plenty. I'll miss you too, Bob. Do you suppose it'd be all right for me to stop and pick Ernie up on my way back? Stop for Ernie? Yeah, I'm worried about him. You know, the way he's feeling, I, I'm afraid he'll drink too much and do something foolish. Oh, Ernie'd never do anything foolish. Worst he'd do would be to get a suit full. Well, I think I'll stop for him just the same. I hope you don't think I'm being stubborn. Oh, no, go ahead. I ought to be jealous, though. Here I am, the man that's proposed to you nine times, about to go away for a whole month. And you give all your thoughts to a man that goes around killing people for a living. Careful, Doctor. I've heard the same crack made about certain members of the medical profession. <laughs> you win. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, Doctor. Oh, well, goodbye, Johnny. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Bob. Have a good time. If you ask me, it was a very quiet little killing party. Very quiet. Nothing like a hanging I once covered. It was a woman, too. Oh, shut up, Manning. You ought to get an assignment covering a slaughterhouse. Don't tell me to shut up. Since I've been on this newspaper racket, I've covered 50 legal hangs. Some of them were pips, too. I once caught a double feature. Two guys at the same time. Boy, you should have got a load of that. Took six guards to handle each one of them. Let's have a little drink there, will you, baby? Well, look who's coming. Death, taking a holiday. Mr. Matthews. Mr. Executioner Matthews. Come on up and have a drink. I was just making some very pertinent observations, and then your profession. Come on, have a drink. Listen, you can't ignore me just because you're yeah. Leave him alone, Manning. Yeah, what are you hopping on him for? Cut it out. He'll be thinking we're all like you. Heaven forbid. Sure, I'll leave him alone when he says something. All right. Don't, don't try to be the strong silent person. I'll say something. You're all a bunch of crawling vermin. You vultures. Why do you come here to see a man die? Why? You don't have to. Nobody makes you stare at... At death. So you don't like it. Well, we don't like you either, Mr. Sanctimonious Murderer. And to show you how little we like you... Hey, cut that out, you guys. You can't do that in here. What are you trying to do, give the place a bad name? I'll 
putting him right out, Miss Jones. and that reporter Manning got nasty. All of a sudden, there was a fight, and I guess I was in for a shellacking. And then Johnny came along, and... Hey, Johnny! Johnny! Sucker punch. No, I don't think so. You you were cut. Oh, yeah. I remember now. The guy with a bottle. Must have nicked me. Don't talk now. Keep quiet. Okay. That's good enough for me. Come on, Manning. Ten bucks. Kick in for the repairs. All right. I'm being wrong. You guys saw that killer slug me? Here you are, Al. Thirty bucks. And that covers the damage we did. Can't pay for everything, boys. To show you, I'm a regular guy, I'll buy a drink. That's a deal. Yeah. Say, Al, now that we're pals again, who was that guy that busted up the fight? Drives car for the warden. He couldn't buy any chance to be a convict, could he? Well, he's in custody. That's right. Yeah. Well, suppose he is. That kid's all right. Well, ain't that just dandy? I don't know what you guys are going to do, but I'm going to get my $10 back with interest. I've been gunning for this governor for a long time. So it's right up my alley. Hey, how does this sound for a headline? State executioner drunk starts brawl. Warden's convict chauffeur attacks newspaper man. Oh, you turn my stomach. Am I going to have fun? Huh. If that trustee ever comes up for a parole, he'll be an old man with a long white beard before I ever let him get out of the jug. Good morning, Johnny. How's the neck? Kind of feels like Joe Lewis hit me a rabbit punch or something. Well, that's only natural. You got cut pretty badly. Open your mouth. It's a long time for everybody, is that? What are you trying to say? I said it's been a long time since anyone did that. Did what? I held my hand. Oh, don't get me wrong, Miss Jones. I didn't mean to get fresh. It's just that, well, to have a woman touch you after being in a place like this for three years, it starts you thinking about things that happened before. Maybe you don't get what I mean. I think I do, Johnny. Thanks for not getting sore. You better sit up a bit. I want to look at that bandage. Huh. 
How'd you ever happen to get in here, Johnny? <laughs> Just one of those things. Maybe I ought to tell you I took a rap I didn't deserve, but I won't. I'd be talking just like the rest of the mugs up here if I did. Let's just say I had a little hard luck. From the time I was a kid down on the east side, I was always the one the cops caught up with. Well, you'll have another chance to make good when you get out of here, won't you? Sure, I guess so. If I keep my nose clean. And maybe you don't think I'm not going to try it. Hold your head still. Trouble with me is, there'll be a bank stick up, and I'll be standing on some corner a mile away, and bang, John Law will have me. It's always been that way. Well, your philosophy's slightly cockeyed, Johnny, but I like the way you carry your chin. My chin? Oh, yeah, I get it. You mean I'm always leading with, don't you, Joan? I'm sorry I meant Miss Joan. Always talking out of turn, that's me. Well, that's all right, this one. Lie back on the pillow. You know you're swell. I'm not getting sore when a con called you by your first name. I can't figure you out at all. Oh, well, that makes it mutual. The angle I can't figure is, why do you stick around a joint like this? Now, me, I stay because I have to, but you're free to go. Why do you stay? I'll tell you a secret, Johnny. I haven't figured out the answer to that one myself. You certainly managed to mess things up, Ernie. Listen to this. State executioner drunk starts brawl. Warden's convict chauffeur attacks reporter. Prison investigation demanded. Those are just the headlines. Here are a few choice things from his story. Our state's prison is a country club. Warden James Henderson is a swell guy to his convicts. Drunken orgies are common following execution. Convicts are allowed to roam free in the village. Lawlessness reigns supreme. That guy Manning ought to be writing fiction. Fiction or no fiction, his story is apt to cause a lot of trouble. You're going to have my resignation, Jim. Oh, confound it, I don't want your resignation. That would only make matters worse. You can see the headlines now. State executioner quits under fire. No way. You've got to stick and fight. Fight? <laughs> Strikes you so funny? Me, Matthews, fighting for my scurvy job. <laughs> what did the other paper say about last night? They didn't touch it. They just printed a few routine execution stories. Which ought to prove to you that this whole thing was cooked up by Manning for personal revenge. There's no doubt about it. But Manning's outfit has been looking for a chance to hop in the present administration, and I'm afraid this is it. <laughs> Warden Henderson speaking. Who? Oh. Put him on. Here comes trouble. It's the governor. Uh-uh. Good morning, governor. <clears throat> yes, I read it. But the charges are ridiculous. No truth in them at all. Certainly I'm positive. Of course, if you feel that an investigation is absolutely necessary, I, I'll be willing to meet before any board you name. All right. I'll be there. Goodbye. What's it look like? A conference with the governor and the attorney general. Oh. Rankin, get my car down to the gate. I'm leaving for the capital right away. Remember, you can have my resignation if it will help. Oh, forget it. After I explain things, the governor will understand. After all, this job of mine is a reward for helping to elect him. That ought to mean something. But now listen, Jim. I, I wouldn't want anything to happen to Johnny Martin. Not after the way he stepped in to help me. Don't worry. Do you think I'm going to see them break Johnny just because a reporter on a scandal sheet wants a bit of personal satisfaction? <laughs> no, any. Well, that's settled. Everything except one thing. This driver of yours, Johnny Martin. What about Johnny Martin? It wasn't his fault. I understand that. But if we're going to hush this thing up, why, you'd better keep him under wraps. Oh, wait a minute. That boy comes up for parole in a couple of weeks with my recommendation. I know that, but you know how things stand. It's got to be just that way. There's got to be a delay. We can't parole him just now. He's too hot. So, you want to sacrifice Johnny Martin for doing what any man would do? You don't have to look on it as a sacrifice, Jim. It's just a delay. Maybe a year or so, but not now. A year or so? Listen, Charlie, you can't do that. When the board meets, I'm recommending Johnny's parole just as I'd planned. Wait a minute, Jim. 
You've had plenty to say today, and we've listened. We want to play ball with you, but there's a limit. I won't risk any more criticism of the press because of your soft heart or head. Martin shouldn't come up for parole at this sitting. I won't jeopardize the party for you or any one of your prisoners. After all, Martin is only one of 10,000 other men we have in our various institutions. Listen, Henry. I mean it, Jim. The matter's closed as far as I'm concerned. But that doesn't go for me. I'll be there with Martin when the parole board meets. It's bad, very bad. Yes, and it's all my fault. Oh, I wish I'd given up this killing business before I even ever started it. Ah, I guess I'm just hard luck for everybody. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, Ernie. It's Johnny we've got to think of now. Can you suggest anything, Ira? No, not much. We're certain of one thing. Jim and Ernie will do their best to help the boy at the hearing. But in the meantime, he should be prepared for the shock, just in case he's turned down. Johnny's apt to be bitter if that happens. Very bitter. Someone should talk to him a great deal before the day of the hearing. Well, that makes sense. Spend a lot of time with him, Ira. You're the one to do it. No. No, I'm not the one who would. Johnny's a very wise boy. If I came to him with a build-up to a letdown, he'd sense there was something in the air, and that would only make things worse. So that gets us nowhere. Unless Joan undertakes the job. Me? Yes. You could do it. Since Johnny's been in the hospital, you've talked to him a lot, haven't you? Yes. Well, talk to him some more. There are things a woman can convey to a man like Johnny that he'd ignore if they came from a man. Do it. Will you, Joan? Of course, I'll try. Good. Do you think she can get him in the frame of mind to take it? She'll succeed if anyone can. times a day, it tops with me. Barney, it's not going to get you anywhere. You're checking out of here tomorrow. Now, isn't that life for you? Just when things start to break, bang, someone socks you. Well, I've learned to take the socks with a smile that really counts, Johnny. Sure. Sure, I know all that Pollyanna stuff. But I've had my share of socks, see? From now on, it's Johnny Martin that does the socking. I get my parole in just about ten days. And in three months, I walk out of this place a free man. Lean forward a little bit, will you? You know, I, I've been figuring out the right thing to say to you, Miss Joan. Something that wouldn't make you sore. I think I've got it. Will you listen? Sure. Do you mind looking over there? It's funny, but... I'm glad I got in that scrap. Of course, I'd seen you around. But being in here and having you talk to me, I, I almost thought you were my pal. And I want to tell you that when I get out of here, I'm not going to forget how swell you've been. Not for a minute. But I haven't done anything. Oh, yes, you have. I won't say this again, see? I wouldn't have the nerve to. In here, I'm kind of brave. So, I want to tell you that I've got to have something to work for. Guy's got to have somebody to bring the bacon home to. Maybe you won't like it, but I sort of figured I could do it for you. By doing good outside, I mean. You see, I guess I kind of love you. Oh, I know I shouldn't be saying these things to you, but I just can't help it. I won't bother you, John. I just want to think I'm working for you kind of a game, see? Oh, Johnny. Hey. Say, you shouldn't. Why, well, you're crying. Oh, I didn't mean to say anything wrong. Joan, honest, I didn't. Just that, well, I thought you'd like to know. Please stop crying. Don't mind me. I'm just being silly. I'm glad you told me. Makes me very proud. 
being very happy. But women often cry when they're happy, didn't you know that? Sure. Sure, I know what you're talking about. Once when I was a kid, Ma brought me home a bugle once. What was the Lulu? It had a gold cord and all shiny. I could throw by balls. <laughs> you see, I, I couldn't play it, but boy, was I happy. <laughs> <laughs> happen to Johnny. If his parole is refused, you can help him make the best of it. But if he gets it, well, two people in love ask no odds of life, do they? Then you don't think I'm wrong to love him even, even if he is a... Convict? No, Joan. You're not wrong. Your heart would tell you if you were. Oh, thanks. I needed someone to tell me that. You're not wrong. Your heart would tell you if you were. Oh, thanks, Ira. I needed somebody to say that to me. You're very kind. Gee, Mr. Henderson, I've been looking forward to this trip for a long time. I know you have, Ken. It sort of makes me feel good all over, knowing I'm going to get my ticket to the outside. And have I got plans? Aren't you a little afraid to make plans before you parole? Afraid of what? My record's clean, isn't it? You're recommending my ticket, aren't you? Yes, yes, Tony. A cinch, Mr. Henderson. A mortal cinch. It's a lie, Mr. Henderson. The guy's lying. Before we proceed further with this hearing, I must insist that the applicant leave the room. Shall I leave, Warden? Yeah, I'll do as he says. Now, Mr. Garrity, you were saying that the convict Martin was intoxicated on the night of the fight. He was drunk, if I ever seen a drunk man. And I've seen a lot of them. Just a moment, Mr. Chairman. You will sit down, Mr. Matthews, until called upon by the board. But I insist on being heard. This man was lying. I ought to know I was there. The board has been informed that you were there, Mr. Matthews. It has also been informed that you were intoxicated. But Martin wasn't even there when the fight started. Mammy made some nasty cracks about my profession, and I cracked back at him. Then the fight started. Johnny came in looking for me, and when he saw the tough spot I was in, he, he came to my assistance. And that's all there was to it. Mr. Matthews, you're here as a private individual, not in any official capacity. And the issue before the board has nothing to do with your actions or opinions. Therefore, your attempt to take the blame for the prisoner is nothing but a useless and idle gesture. Unless you refrain from interrupting this hearing, I must insist that you leave. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say a few words. Go ahead, Warden. Mr. Matthews came here today because he felt that an injustice had been done Johnny Martin, and I quite agree with him. I recommended the parole for Martin because he's been a model prisoner in every respect. I ask you to honor my recommendation. Model prisoners do not frequent drinking places or engage in brawls, Warden. In rendering a judgment in this case, we have to take into consideration the effect of the release of the prisoner on the community, on the taxpayers, and on the... Uh, and on Manning's publisher. On the press of the entire state, I should say. Gentlemen, I am aware of the influences having been brought to bear in this case. I'm also aware that Martin is being made the victim of a desire on the part of one man for petty personal revenge. 
But I'm not pleading for Martin now. I'm pleading for those 2,000 other convicts in my charge. I suppose you'd like to turn them loose, too, so they could go around assaulting decent citizens. These 2,000 men may be prisoners, but they have a sense of justice and fair play. If you refuse a parole to Johnny Martin after the way he's worked so hard to get it, what will these men think? Mr. Henderson, you are the warden of the state penitentiary, not I. This board is not interested in what your convicts think. Personally, I shouldn't consider their opinion germane to the issue. Bring the prisoner in. Convict 7753, your petition for parole is denied. And apply again six months from now. This is what I've been working for, is it? For three years, I've listened to a lot of guts and watched my step every minute because I want to get out of prison. And now you're giving me the business. And you want me to be a model prisoner for six more months and try again. No thanks, mister. I'm not simple enough to be a sucker twice. From now on, you can take that model prisoner bunk and stuff in the dismal swamp. I'll tell you what a model prisoner is, you hypocrite. Sure, I'll serve my stretch every minute of it. But the day I get out, we've got a date, mister. I'm going to look you up and spit right in your eyes. Johnny, Johnny, let me go. Let me tell that low-down sour prison right I've got on my mind. Stop it. You only hurt your own chances. Let him go, Bailiff. I'll take care of him. Come on, let's get out of here. You're entirely right, Mr. Manning, in opposing the parole of that man. He's a dangerous type. Needs discipline. You, uh, you may quote me in your newspapers to that effect. Oh, don't worry, Rutledge. I'll give you a plug. I know it's rotten, Johnny, but don't give up. Six months will soon pass by and we can apply again. By that time, it'll all be forgotten. And... Don't kid me, Mr. Henderson. I saw the look on that guy Manning's face today. So keep books on my time and see that I serve it. So skip the talk. Oh, wait a minute, Johnny. Sure, I'll wait. So all I've got to do now is wait for two more years. Were you, Johnny? It wouldn't help. I was thinking. I know. The light's green. You're all right, Johnny. I got some news for you. I don't want to hear nothing from you. You hit me yesterday, you did in the yard, with the blackjack. Sure, I hit you, and I'll hit you again, too, any time you get out of line. Someday when you hit me, I'll squeeze your neck till it pops. I'm Big Billy. I'm strong. Stronger than you are. Stronger than anybody is. That's why you're afraid to hit me without a blackjack. I'm smart, I know. Well, listen, you big lummox, for two cents to come in there and give you a lesson. You got the keys, and you won't come in. You're afraid to come in. Me and my pal Johnny, we know you're afraid. My pal Johnny's smart. He figured out a way how to get out of here. I'm smart, too. I'll figure out a way, too, just like Johnny did. Uh, you think Johnny figured a way to get out of here? You think Johnny's smart, do you? Well, that's why you're wrong. The parole board turned your pal down today, and he's staying here. <laughs> hey, is that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> the yard boss got word from the warden. <laughs> no fooling. Hey, kid, you hear that? 
The parole board turned down the bank. Who cares? Oh, you give me a pain with your reading. That, my friend, is because you can't read. Uh, <laughs> ah, the pig. <laughs> I'll bet you're glad to hear your pal's gonna stay with you a couple of more years, ain't you? Johnny won't stay here. Johnny's smart. Johnny's smarter than I am, even. We'll figure out a way to get out together, Johnny and me. Go on, you couldn't figure out nothing. Yeah, you better always carry your blackjack. Someday you lose your blackjack. And then I'll squeeze your neck till it pops. Hey, don't worry, you big ape. I'll never lose it. <laughs> Guy's scared of me. I'm Big Billy. I'm strong. Yeah. Someday you'll squeeze his neck until it Pops. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'll do. Yeah. Well, we'll be home in a few minutes. Yeah. Home. Oh. Glad you decided to take things in the right way, Johnny. Why not? One more kick in the pants isn't going to kill me. At least if I do my time, I won't have to be reporting to parole officers every time I turn around. That's the spirit. I'm going to do everything I can to make up for the bad break you've got. You know... You've got a lot to look forward to when you do get out with Joan. Who told you about Joan and me? She did. No fool. I won't play to see him when he comes back. He'll be bitter. He's bound to be. Oh, he's made so many plans for us. Then our job is to keep him from being bitter. But it's so unfair, Ira. Why should he be kept here simply because a single reporter decided to make news out of, out of something that wasn't even Johnny's fault? Look, Joan. There's no doubt Johnny's been the victim of unfair tactics. But we must accept things as they are. If you love him, you will help him to forget. To look forward to what lies in the future for both of you. You'll do that. Won't you? Yes, I will. And thanks for straightening me out. I might have messed things up too. Hey, what? It's all off, see? I mean about my taking things like a little man. Johnny, what are you talking about? I mean it. I just decided I was a sucker to be back here. I had a chance to scram for Canada a little while ago, and like a chump, I listened to a lot of malarkey from you. But it's different from now on. Oh, skip it, skip it. I mean it, Warden. You can keep your brake, see? And you can get another boy to drive your buggy. Johnny Martin, I've treated you as fairly and squarely as any man could. You wouldn't repay kindly. Oh, wouldn't I? Well, you just wait and see. I'm through being a patsy, get it? From now on, I'm a con, and you're just a head kick. You stay on your side, and I'll stay on mine. Maybe. All right, if that's the way you want it, report to Johnson, the odd boss, and tell him that all your privileges have been suspended. That suits me. I can't understand it. Driving up here, he was in a great frame of mind. He accepted the situation as a bad break, said he'd make the best of it. Then when we drove up to the administration building, he changed suddenly. Became hard as nails. Well, perhaps it was the sight of the prison. The realization that he must remain here two more years. No, that wasn't it, Ira. It wasn't the sight of the prison. It was something else he saw. What do you mean, Ernie? Don't you know? What are you talking about? Well, all I know is that Johnny froze up the minute he saw Joan and Ira in Ira's office. Well, why would that affect him? Come to the point, Ernie. The point is that Joan seemed to have her arms around Ira's neck. Probably all very innocently. Johnny didn't seem to think so. So that was it. Where is he? I sent him to Johnson. I want to talk to him. Please let me talk to him because I can straighten this whole thing up. 
I'm sending Joan Ryan over to your office right away, Johnson. Have a talk to Johnny Martin. Hello. Thanks. Suppose you tell me what this is all about. Am I running a petter's paradise or a prison? Johnny. What do you want? I want to talk to you. What about being a good boy? Why don't you beat it? Oh, Johnny, you've got to listen to me. I love you, and I don't want you to do anything foolish. The warden just told so me... So you that... love me, huh? Don't make me laugh. I suppose the warden gave you the job of softening me up. Well, skip it. I'm wise to your act, talking to me in the hospital to pass the time while you're waiting for the chaplain. Okay, you've got your preacher. Now, do me a favor and don't bother me. Johnny! Look at me. Well, can't you see it's you I love? I know you saw me with Ira. I went to him when I when I heard you'd been refused your parole. I was worried about you. I told him about you and me. And he told me to wait for you, not to lose faith in the future. Our future, Johnny. I kissed him. Of course I did, because he was so kind. That's what you saw, Johnny. Only that. Is this on the letter? Of course it is. Don't you see, Johnny? That's why you've got to fight. It's for us. We've got to fight this thing out together. I'll go wherever you go. Do anything you do, as soon as you're free. Please believe me. Vacation, Doctor? Swell. Things happened to you while I was away, didn't they? You mean about my being turned down for my parole? That, and about you and Joan. She wrote me. You're crazy about her, too, aren't you? I asked her to marry me. Sort me, Doc. No, not a bit. You're a very lucky fellow, Johnny. I'll be pulling for you when you get out. Pulling for both of you. Thanks, Doctor. Oh, by the way, I haven't forgotten that talk I'm to have with Big Billy. I'm glad of that. He's been getting worse lately. I know you're not sick, pal. It's just that the doctor wants to talk to you, see? Well, he's a swell guy. You keep out of this. Come on, Billy. Come on. Come on. Come 
come back. They'll kill you. You haven't got a chance. Johnny, why did you do it? I don't know, my dear. A guard was killed. And evidently, Johnny was trying to escape. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, much has been said during this trial about the excellent record of the defendant. Let's look at that record. Only a few weeks ago, the defendant, as a trustee, betrayed the confidence placed in him by the warden of our state prison and engaged in a barroom brawl, attacking without provocation certain citizens, including a respected member of the Metropolitan Press. As a result of that brawl, the State Board of Parole refused his application for parole. The chairman of the board, Mr. Rutledge, testified that the defendant flew into a rage when his application was denied and shouted threats. To quote from Mr. Rutledge's testimony, the defendant, a convict, threatened to call on him and spit in his eye the day that he got out of prison. I submit, ladies and gentlemen, that this testimony proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that the defendant was savagely bitter at the refusal of the board to release him. The witness Barth testified that the defendant, Johnny Martin, with his cellmate, a convict known as Big Billy, engaged in a fight with Jarvis, the murdered guard. A second guard, Mike Gurney, was injured when he went to the aid of Jarvis. Then the defendant, together with his cellmate, attempted a mad dash for freedom. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is part of the excellent record of Johnny Martin. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you're intelligent people. When you retire to the jury room, I ask you to weigh carefully the testimony presented by the state in this case. Again today, I bring you grim news. Promptly at 8 o'clock tonight, convict John Martin, who killed a guard while making a break for freedom, will pay his debt to society in the electric chair at the state penitentiary. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. What's holding up my call to the governor? Yes, I'll hold on. Hurry it up. Yes, I'm calling the governor. Hello, Henry. This is Jim Henderson. Look, Henry. We've been friends for years. I'm asking you, in the name of that friendship, to commute Johnny Martin's sentence to life. 
I'm sure the boy's innocent. I know that you don't want to see an innocent man go to the chair. That's the end. Where are you going? I'm in my room sitting in the dark. So I won't see the lights go dim with... with Jack. I'll run over to the hospital and pick up my things. It's about that time. Yeah, about time. What's the matter with you? Since when did you get running off of the feet? Why don't you sit down? That's your trap. Can I walk over one, two? Sure. Go ahead and walk. I'll walk. Well, who are you staring at? Why don't you read your book? Because it fascinates me to watch a man try to walk off his troubles. Who said I got any troubles? Why try to kid me? Something's got you all tied up in knots. It couldn't be because it's Johnny Martin's knife, could it? <laughs> Me worried because that thing's getting what's coming to him? I should say not. My mistake. I just thought maybe I might be worried about sending him to, uh, Hallelujah. What do you mean I'm sending him? Well, after all, you were the only witness. If he hadn't told the truth about Johnny, he wouldn't be dying tonight. You think it wasn't? I wouldn't care if it wasn't. You and Johnny hated each other's insides. I wouldn't blame you if you skipped telling a few things in court. Oh, fool on, kid. Is that the way you feel about it? Sure. If a guy goes through life loving his enemies, he's a cinch to end up on a slab full of lead sooner or later. That's the way I figure. Now, if you always give me the needle, now I, we're square for good. That's the way I figure. You're right. What do you care if he laps up a little state voltage? Electricity's cheap. Mm. I'm going to complain to the warden about that executioner testing his dynamos. Interferes with my reading. About ten minutes, Johnny will be kicking off. <laughs> Probably wishing he could have just five minutes alone with you before he crosses over. <laughs> well, they won't get him. He won't get five minutes of my time. He's through. Maybe. Maybe not. What do you mean? Well, he may claim five minutes of your time on the other side. If there is another side. side. We did everything we could, Johnny. I want you to know that. Sure you did, Mr. Haynes. I don't blame you or anybody. Just another bad break. This will be the last one. I wonder what Joan's doing right now. She's sitting in her room. Oh, I get it. In the dark. She doesn't want the lights to tell her when I go. That's it, isn't it? That's it, Johnny. Leaving her is the only thing that bothers me. We were going to do so many things together when I got out. I wonder if I'll ever see her again, Mr. Haynes. I mean, over there. I'm sure you will, Johnny.
talk about there being another life after you kick off here? I'd feel cheated if I didn't. I'm 26 years old, and I've spent 10 years in the country's best reformatories in jail. Add that to the fact that I'm in here from now on, you'll understand my point of view. I wonder what Johnny had for his last meal. It's funny, isn't it? They let a guy order anything he wants for his last meal. And they warm it all over again inside. Uh, can that stuff, will you? What's the matter, boss? You're getting soft? You can still call the guard and save Johnny if you want to. Just about now, the chaplain's praying with him. In a couple of minutes, the guards will come for him, and he'll start walking for... Stop that crap, will you? Give me the creeps. It's not half so bad as you'll have him from now on. At night, after they turn the lights out, you'll be down there in your cot and curse because you can't sleep. Maybe you'll even see Johnny there in the dark. Maybe he'll point a finger at you and say, What are you waiting for, boss? Why don't you come on over here where we can settle things? Maybe you yellow cur, you wouldn't kill anybody. Call the guard and ease your mind. Go on, call him. Ah, uh, not me. He's gonna take it. All right, you. Yeah, come with us. Oh, where are you taking me? You'll see. We need us some peanuts and popcorn to make this a good show. Hey, one? Cut it out, Manny. Hey, what is this? What are you taking me here for? Your pal's about ready to go. We thought maybe you'd like to say goodbye. Uh, you say goodbye to that sink? I got some pride. All right, wise guy, you can take me back now. And this your reserved seat for the show? Why, Mr. Boss, you wouldn't think of such a thing. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. He wants to see everything. Oh, certainly, certainly. Step right up to the window there, Bob. You won't miss a thing. Sure, it suits me. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me. this kind of a killing before? Have you, boss? How does it feel to send a man to his death? Hey, me, it's, it's you that does it.
Okay. I thought. I didn't miss a thing, just like you wanted me to. I feel swell. Come on. Wait a minute. I wonder how the warden's gonna feel when he finds out he's killed an innocent guy. And you too. That makes you all murderers, doesn't it? Sure it does. It makes you more killers than all those guys on death row. That kid was innocent. Say it again, boss. Say it again. Let's, let's all hear you say it. Sure, I will. Sure, I'll say it again. Johnny was trying to help those guards when Big Billy made his break. And you killed him, didn't you, Warden? You killed an innocent guy. That makes you all murderers. That's really a little bit wrong, Bob. We knew you were lying at Johnny's trial. Oh, you hated it. But you wouldn't tell the truth even though you knew he'd die if it didn't. Bring him in. Oh, it was an act. You framed me. Well, this is what you've been waiting for, Johnny. My parole? An unconditional pardon. Pardon? Just think, honey. After I came so close to going. You didn't come so terribly close, Johnny. What do you mean? I have this on the control room desk, all ready to hand to the warden if Boss hadn't spilled. I wasn't taking any chances. What's this? It's my resignation. You would have had quite a time finding anybody to throw that switch in less than 24 hours. And anything can happen in 24 hours. <laughs> oh, Ernie, that's swell of you. Think nothing of it. I figured I owed you something after getting into a jam in the first place, Johnny. By the way, Warden, that resignation's official. I quit. What? Yeah. I bought myself a little farm up in Connecticut. I'm gonna raise chickens. <laughs> but not for the market. Just for the eggs. No, I never could kill a chicken. <laughs> <laughs>